All right, uh, this is my everything else garden tour. <laughs> uh, today is, let's see, it is Monday, June 20th, 2022. I am in zone 7A in Eastern Tennessee. And we will go through all the different plants that I have that are not tomatoes and not peppers. So let's get started. Here is my first of the yellow squash, and this is called Smooth Criminal. I have no idea why they call it criminal, but smooth um, is basically that a lot of yellow and summer, well, actually zucchini and yellow peppers have like prickly spines when you go to pick them, and Smooth Criminal does not have all those prickly, pine, prickly spines. Um, this one has two um, let's see see if I can get the second one in, in view well no. two squash on it so far and it has a ton more growth I see a lot more greenery and uh, flowers forming so smooth criminal has done wonderfully well for me in the past and I'm looking forward to having some nice yellow squash this year in the bed with Smooth Criminal, I have some bush beans, and these, I believe, are rattlesnake, no, yeah, I'll have to remember what these are. Oh, these are red swan. So I just planted them um, maybe two weeks ago. Next to it, we have some rattlesnake pole beans. Over on this side, we have blahild, I guess, pole beans. And then down here we have Marvel of Venice pole beans. So they have started climbing up their little makeshift towers. And uh, I want to go ahead and can a lot of beans this year. So that's why I'm growing so many pole beans in addition to the bush beans that you will be seeing shortly. So here another set of the bush beans that I have. And I have them growing in my green stock tower. And these are dragon's tongue. So I have 18 of these plants growing in this tower and they have been doing well. I've had several harvests off of them so far. Now they have a very light green. I don't know if you can tell how light of a green they are foliage. And I'm not sure if it's because that's the way the plants are since this is really the first time I have grown these or if uh, they are just seriously lacking nitrogen. Although I did go ahead and put in a bunch of fertilizer when I planted them. But anyway, this is Dragon's Tongue. In my other tower, I still have some more bush beans. This one is Red Swan. Um, and let me see if I can find the other one. Nope, my mistake. No more of the other types of beans here because what I did is grew soybeans instead. So this is Green Chiba. Um, that's a CH for Chiba and then I also have some other edamame that I'm growing and let me see if I can find some of the fruits of them so I have some young edamame on this plant um, I've got more over here and all the edamames that I planted earlier which are taking over in this tower garden um, they are doing really well and i'm looking forward to having some edamame now these are open pollinated plants so i don't have to worry about all those wonderful problems with the hybrids and yada 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 but i have a lot of edamame in here so they are growing really well in this tower garden more edamame in this raised bed and I forgot the name of it but it didn't germinate really well um, they are growing okay for the ones that did make it but um, and they are started flowering so I'm hopeful that I will get some out of this one and we'll see what they taste like again this one is also open pollinated time to move on to the eggplants now this one, I forgot the name of it, it so I will put it on screen. Um, it's funny, this one is now putting on some flowers. So I've got three flowers that have opened so far and I have a whole bunch more that are forming. This plant 
is probably, I don't know, I'd call it the scrawniest, but it is very definitely the tallest. It had a hard time with the flea beetles this year, but it's finally coming into its own. Um, the thing about this particular one is it's supposed to have uh, long, it's the Asian type, so it has the long cylindrical fruits, uh, purple. I believe and they are supposed to be so sweet you can eat them raw yeah eggplant so we'll see how it goes I have it against a pole right now I think I'm gonna have to put in another pole because I think this one's gonna outgrow it very soon because hey it's only June 20th now here is Rosita this is a pepper excuse me an eggplant that I grew last year that didn't do real well but it was extremely crowded out and it did produce one pepper, or <laughs> I keep calling it a pepper, one eggplant that was very nice. Well, this year it is the um, shortest of all my eggplant plants, but it is the best looking of all my eggplant plants. So looking forward to getting them out of Rosita this year. It has more of a traditional eggplant shape to it. So um, we'll see how it goes. The last of my three eggplants is Taiwan Purple and it was absolutely gorgeous when i put it in but the flea beetles have just you know tried to devour it still it's it's growing pretty well and uh, despite the fact that it's next to the carrots which are kind of overtaking it at the moment but this is my first year growing it it has the asian type so that's the long purple type of eggplant so we'll see what they end up tasting like because it's the first year i've been growing them Right in the back of my eggplant, you can see I have a ton of carrots. I've got to pull some of them. Um, they're kind of taking over this part, and they're probably time to be picked. I don't know what variety this one is because I put in three, but I'm not sure what we're looking at at the moment. Now, these are, I think, my elephant garlic that are finally starting to die down, so I'll be um, harvesting them soon. I've harvested a ton of garlic, elephant garlic, and onion so far this year, and these are the last ones that I'm leaving in ground until I'm ready to uh, pick them. Back here in my alcove, I have some more smooth criminal squash. I am going to go ahead and thin these to the best one which is probably going to be this far one since it has more leaves but i usually like to wait uh, until maybe another week before i decide which one i want to keep next to it i have a basket full of flowers so i have calendula i have uh, hummingbird mint uh, i think it's lemon bee balm and a different kind of bee balm so different definitely yeah some interesting plants in here and in here I have some more calendula some more bee balm and also some blue-eyed African daisies so that will be very interesting to see now right in back of them is a very new acquisition for me like uh, two days ago and this is a fig tree this one is called Celeste and it is supposed to be hardy to my zone, uh, which is seven. So uh, I know some people say, oh no, you can't grow figs because you have to have like a zone eight through 10 or whatever. But um, the nursery that I bought this from said, nope, you can go ahead and grow this one um, in your climate, in our climate rather, because it will die down and then it will sprout back up and grow tremendously next year. I do have to repot it since it's still in its nursery pot. And I'm actually going to grow this in a grow bag. So we'll see how this progresses throughout the year. My rosemary plant that just will not die. I bought this a couple years ago, put it in the ground. And, you know, the soil here is really, really bad. It's clay and rocks. Um, I cut it off. I don't know if you can see that real well, but I cut it off and then this thing just started sprouting and growing again. So um, I'm going to have to trim it back again this year. <laughs> but I love rosemary. I love the scent of it, even though I don't use it so much in food. But um, yeah, rosemary. And then right underneath, I do have some peppermint. Yes, I know peppermint is invasive, but this is an alcove. It is surrounded by sidewalks and everything. 
and my husband insisted that I put them here so I told him it's gonna be invasive and he said no I want that I was like yeah okay so uh, when I step on them when I go to all my other plants well I'm sure it'll smell real nice here I have a marjoram plant and right next to it I have a lemon verbena they have been in these grow bags for <laughs> three years now this is their third season I really don't do anything to them other than water them and occasionally give them a little dose of fertilizer this one this lemon verbena especially I thought was just not gonna come back this year because it was just sticks but it has come back and it's doing beautifully and this marjoram has gotten out of control I have cut it back several times so far but hey, marjoram's marjoram. It's getting ready to flower and the bees and the pollinators love it. So here is a perennial flower bed. You can see this echinacea. Um, this one overtook the area where the rosemary is last year. And so I decided to rip it out and plant it over here this year and it is just going to town. This is just your typical purple coneflower. Next to it, with the <laughs> echinacea falling over it, is a dahlia. I don't know which one this is, but it overwintered. So don't let them tell you that you can't overwinter a dahlia in zone 7, because I just mulched it really heavily. Okay, what else do we have? We have some snapdragons, and this snapdragon in the back, let's see if I can zoom in on it some more. This one has proved to be a perennial. I grew it last year. It overwintered out here um, in a really bad spot. I didn't really mulch it much. Hey, it came back and uh, yeah, it's the same plant. It's, it's not definitely not a seed drop. So I guess it wants to be perennial for me. And right next to it is another different kind of snapdragon. Back over here, we have a different Echinacea. This one I think is Cheyenne Spirit, so it has a pretty orangey pink red flower. Then I have some borage underneath it. I have some basil. I think this is Persian basil. Over there I have a cardinal salvia, and I just planted this a little while ago, so don't judge it by its size yet. Panning over down here I have some sweet alyssum. And this is my patch of uh, chamomile. So I grew all these from seed. And this is first year, so it's actually not doing too bad because it's in terrible clay soil. So it's actually doing okay. Now back here I have another of the blue-eyed daisies. And you can, I think this one is just finished flowering. So it was really pretty, I mean white with a blue eye. Down here I have a volunteer zinnia. I don't know which one it is. Um, I'm hoping it's the glowing pink that I grew last year because it was absolutely gorgeous. But we'll see. It decided to volunteer right here in the midst of the wood chips, so I figured I'd keep it. Um, in this grow bag right next to it, I have some more chamomile and some stock. Blue, blue stock, I think. Blue sissy. And right next to it in the composter, I have probably a cucumber um, growing out of the composter and I figured eh, well if it wants to grow there I will let it and uh, see what happens I'm not gonna water it I'm not gonna do anything to it it's just gonna grow however it grows and we'll see here is one of my strawberry patches it doesn't look like much at the moment but I just finished a harvest and it was a big harvest this year beautiful beautiful strawberries and I've had this bunch for three years now. And this is the first year that they've really started producing, but gosh, they produced crazily. Now I am going to pick out the youngest and strongest of these strawberries. And I've got one more green stock tower and I'm going to fill it with strawberries. Next to my uh, jalapenos, I have what is a bee balm. I don't know what kind of bee balm it is, probably a pink one, and I know they're perennial and I know that they, you know, prefer to be in ground, but I figured what the heck, let's go ahead and try to grow it in a grow bag. Beside the uh, tomatoes and everything, I have some mixed flowers. I have a Persian basil, some marigolds, a calendula, and now we're going to go on to the cucumbers. Now, this one is China Jade. 
it has done very poorly. Um, it may start doing better. It has just started looking better in the last um, week or so. I don't know. It is supposed to be like a long, thin um, English type, but so far it is done badly. Um, matter of fact, the bigger ones were doing so badly that I planted some more seeds and they aren't doing great either. So I'm not sure if it's the soil underneath, which should be pretty good soil. But um, yeah, China Jade isn't doing all that great. Now next to China Jade, I have, I believe this is Boston Pickling. So I did go ahead and buy these because China Jade was doing so badly. And I did want a pickling type cucumber as well. Um, this has started doing better, so I should uh, get some nice cucumbers off of it. Next to it, I have um, an ageratum called Lita, and then I have another borage that isn't looking too happy, but hey. All right, so now on to the straw strawberries. These are raspberries. So this is a dwarf raspberry plant, which is doing beautifully. I planted it last year, didn't do a whole lot, but this year it's come back and come back strong. And sorry about the glare on this one, but this one is my heritage raspberry and it has just gone bonkers this year. So um, yeah, I have to go ahead and have it become more user friendly because this is just coming out into the pathway. So you wanna see what a good cucumber plant looks like? This one is my CEO Long. I grew these last year and they were absolutely fantastic, extremely prolific and very large cucumbers. Now let me go and find one of the cucumbers Sorry for the camera shake. Let's see, yep, there I go knocking over things. So here is the first one of my cucumbers so far this year. Um, yeah, this is a baby one. This was about one inch about this time last week. And I've got a whole bunch more on this plant. So yeah, um, I highly recommend See You Along. They, they've been hugely prolific for me. And they've already passed the four foot mark coming up on five foot. So uh, looking forward again to having more cucumbers off of this. Well, besides my heritage raspberry, I have a little lavender plant that I started from seed this year. I have a dill plant that I started from seed, which isn't looking all that great, but I think the raspberry is probably taking a lot of uh, energy from the ground. Then I have some more dahlias that I overwintered and I do not remember what varieties they are. I think I've got a great silence. Um, this one has raspberry in the name. Can't remember exactly what it is but it produces huge raspberry colored blossoms and it's beautiful. And this one is a single that has just, um, it's very prolific and as far as blossoms. It doesn't have many at the moment because of the heat, but uh, it should be blossoming again real soon. My grow bag potato patch. <laughs> I should have taken a picture of this before the heat really set in because this was a beautiful potato patch. But actually, I think some of them are about ready for harvest and I'll have to do a harvest video because I saw some potatoes peeking out of the ground. Now, I planted these pretty deep in these five gallon grow bags. So for something to be peeking out of the ground, that was amazing. And of course, I covered it up as soon as I saw it. But um, yeah, I would think that the first plant is going to be ready for harvest in probably another oh, week or so. For a different kind of potato, these are my sweet potatoes. So these are all in 10 or I think this one is probably a 20 gallon grow bag and 10, 12, 20. And this is all from one seed potato. Yeah, all this. So, you know, I just grew, you know, some slips and everything like that. And uh, I've got all this out of it, so. You don't have to do much. I mean, one sweet potato will get you all this. Here is a perennial bed of flowers. So I have some lemon balm, some hummingbird mint, a butterfly bush, um, some more balm, <laughs> bee balm. So I've got two more. 
I've got a... I don't remember what it is. Um, I think it's another type of bee balm. And then over here I have some swamp milkweed. So this is a, um, a pink swamp milkweed. I think it's called carmine. So this is just going to be my pollinator bed. And most of these are perennials, I think. Maybe all of them are perennials. And so I'm looking forward to many years of uh, happy pollination. So here I have a hibiscus plant in a grow bag. This is probably going to be an annual for me. I got it as a freebie when I got my apple tree. So we'll see how it grows. But it did have a blossom on it when it came to me. And I got it from Fast Growing Trees. Um, and it was a beautiful, beautiful flower. Now in back of it, I have some four o'clocks that are still open because it's so cool this morning. And this is a white one. They're volunteers. I did not plant any four o'clocks this year. I planted two plants last year and I have like more than I can handle. And then I have some calendula and these don't look great at the moment because of that high heat. But um, they have some beautiful, beautiful flowers on them and I think this is called Pacific Beauty. So what's behind this leaf? <laughs> Yeah, this is um, a called Rapicante Zuccio. So it's a type of, um, I guess they call it trombone zucchini. And I'm going to zoom back out some. And, I mean, it is supposed to be a plant that you can eat the squash as either summer squash or let them go until winter squash and they taste like a butternut. So I was interested to growing this particular one. It had a lot more fruit on it before the, um, the heat came and most of that aborted. But now it has some more flowers coming out and I do have three nice zucchinis on it so far. So I'm going to eat some as fresh and then I will go ahead and save, let a few go to uh, winter squash style. So here are my double yield cucumbers. I did grow double yields last year and it was quite a prolific producer, but it was so slow to start. And this one is following suit. Um, this big plant I thought was not going to make it. So I went and planted some more seeds and these don't look like they're doing much of anything. Whereas this one finally started growing. So hopefully we'll have some. These are, they, I think they're better as a pickling, but you can also use them as a slicer. Here's a shot of one of my uh, green stock towers. And I have flowers up top for the hummingbirds. And the other one is over here. So this is my second green stock tower, which has a lot of strawberries up top and then other miscellaneous items at the bottom. And then in this little grow container, I have some more bee balm. Here are some more of the volunteer um, four o'clocks. And like I said, I planted zero this year. And I've got all these, and trust me, I have probably pulled out a good 50 more plants, or 50 more seedlings. This is my Kajari melon. It is growing very well. I'm very happy with it. And let me get closer and show you some of the melons. I've got one little melon up here. I've got a really pretty little melon back here, and this is towards the back of my plant, which is naturally next to some of my tomatoes. And hidden up here, we have another little melon. So this one's really pretty. So that's Kajari. I'm sure that there are other melons somewhere on this plant, but they're kind of hard to find. Here's a few days later since I haven't had a chance to edit the video yet and this is a studio long and you can see that they are indeed long and these are only two of the uh, cucumbers like this that are on the plant. Now this is the apple tree I was talking about. Now this is a three-in-one apple tree and which means that it's basically grafted um, three different types under one rootstock and let's go ahead and check that out. So this is the rootstock right here. And then these are three different kinds of um, apples. I have a Red Delicious, which is this 
red one here. This yellow one I think is Granny Smith and this last one with the pink is Gala. So I'm looking forward to growing apples. I have not ever grown an apple tree. I've been watching all these videos and how to prune it and everything like that for this year. So I'm hoping that next year I will get apples out of it. This one is about seven or eight feet tall so far. Fast growing trees. I decided to go ahead and go with them. But um, yeah, apple tree. Okay, so that is the end of my garden tour for the day. I hope you've enjoyed it. This is Gail, the gardening gal, signing out saying have yourself a great day. Bye.